Okay, we have to take an interesting integral. We've got the integral from minus infinity to minus two of one over x times square root of x squared minus one dx. Now you may be familiar with this integral and typically you can just do this by formula and we could say this is the same thing as inverse secant. But now the interesting thing about this, if we get that as our answer and we just evaluate it with these bounds from minus infinity to minus two, well, arc secant is kind of dependent on how it's defined. And if we evaluate this first at minus two, we're gonna get two pi over three. And if we evaluate at minus infinity, now we have minus pi over two. And then putting that together, we get a solution of just pi over six. But the trouble is doing it that way, we actually get the wrong answer. The answer is not pi over six. So what I actually wanna do is do this a few different ways and do it carefully and kind of look at where the problems lie. So for my first method, I'm actually not gonna use trick substitution at all. I'm just gonna do a regular u substitution for square root of x squared minus one. I'll go ahead and take a derivative of this. So the derivative just using power rule is gonna give me one half x squared minus one minus one half. Chain rule, bring a two x out here, dx. But then the twos can cancel and we'll clean this up and we can rewrite our du value as just x over square root of x squared minus one dx. Well, what I can do to set this up really quick is just do a rewrite. And what I'll do is I'm gonna multiply in x over x so that I have, I'm trying to create that x, so I'm gonna create the x in the numerator. And then multiplying in x in the denominator, we get x squared, square root of x squared minus one. For, for this x squared, I can get a value for that. Just, just coming down here, squaring both sides, we have u squared equals x squared minus one. So x squared is gonna be equal to u squared plus one. First, plugging in minus two here, we get minus two squared is four minus one, square root of three for the upper bound. Then plugging in minus infinity, we get a positive infinity square root, that's just gonna be going to infinity. Then again, all this stuff over here to the right, that's all gonna be our du. So we're gonna have du over this x squared value, which is just u squared plus one. But you notice, of course, infinity is more than square root of three, so I'm actually just gonna flip my bounds. And what I need to do is bring a minus sign up front and then I can write this as going from square to three to infinity. And now we'll just integrate, of course, this is just gonna be arctan. So we got here an arctan of u, well, the minus sign up front, we just need to evaluate this from square to three to infinity. Plugging this in, we have our minus sign, evaluating arctan and infinity is gonna be pi over two. Minus times minus is gonna give me a plus here. Arctan of square to three is just pi over three. I'll get a common denominator. We can have this as minus three pi over six plus two pi over six. Gives me a solution of just minus pi over six. And so we were close in our first solution, but we just missed this minus sign. So let's just write this down. So I'm just gonna mark down our solution as minus pi over six, and we'll continue with a few other methods. Okay, so now on to my second method. Now we will actually do the trick substitution. So I'll make my substitution x equal to secant of t. And so like we've dealt with in the previous video, secant is not one-to-one, -one. it's not injective, it's not invertible, but we can restrict our domain in order to make this work. So what I'm gonna do, let's just take the derivative first. So dx is gonna be secant t, tan t, dt. And let's just invert this and we'll deal with the bounds when we get to it. So I'm gonna write this, we'll have t equal to inverse secant of x. And now we'll go ahead and substitute. But now remember at the beginning of the video, we already found our values for inverse secant at minus two and minus infinity. Those values we defined were in the second quadrant. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna define this where it's in the third quadrant. So again, here's our unit circle, right? And then the first time we were looking here in quadrant two. And now what I'm gonna do is interpret it where we input our bounds and we get values in quadrant three. So now evaluating inverse secant at minus two, instead of taking this value at two pi over three, I can take this same value over here, I can take this value at four pi over, th four pi over three. So for our upper bound, we're gonna have four pi over three. And then for minus infinity, we had this value at pi over two that we took, because notice as we're approaching minus pi over two from this side, we have a very small, secant is one over cosine of t, and we have like really small values of cosine here. And now when I evaluate inverse secant at minus infinity, instead of taking this value very close to pi over two, we'll take this value very close to three pi over two. And now we'll just go ahead substituting everything. So we're gonna have in the numerator, it's gonna be our dx value, secant of t, tan t, dt. Our x value is gonna be just secant of t. And then here, x squared minus one, this is gonna give me secant squared t minus one. But now this here, we can just use the identity. This is the same thing as tan squared of t. So when we come down here, we'll just rewrite the whole thing. And now I'll take the square root of tan squared t. It's just gonna give me absolute value tan of t. 
Now, of course, the secants are going to cancel out here. And next, we'll deal with our absolute value. But the way we have this defined, where we're in the third quadrant, tangent is always positive in the third quadrant. So this is important because it allows us to just drop our absolute value here. And so that allows us to just cancel tangent with tangent, and we're just integrating 1. Now, before we finish this off, one more thing I want to do is you'll just notice 3 pi over 2 is greater than 4 pi over 3. We don't really have to do this, but I like to flip the bound so that I have my greater value as the upper bound. So in order to do that, I can just create a minus sign in front and flip this. And now we're going, we'll have it going from 4 pi over 3 to 3 pi over 2. And we're just going to be integrating 1 dt. So of course, this is going to be just minus t evaluated from 4 pi over 3 to 3 pi over 2. We'll evaluate this. So for the first part, it's going to give me minus 3 pi over 2. And then we're going to have minus times minus plus 4 pi over 3. Common denominator, this is going to become minus 9 pi over 6, and I can write this as positive 8 pi over 6. Putting that together, it gives us our solution of just minus pi over 6. So again, same solution. We just had to be careful with our quadrants, careful with our negative sign and our bounds. But now let's just look at one more thing before we finish it off. Okay, now for my last method, I'm actually going to do the same trig substitution. So I left this on the board. But what I want to do is do it where we have it still, where we defined arc secant still in the second quadrant, not the third quadrant. So if we go ahead with this, we found our values for arc secant at these bounds at the very beginning of the video. So let's just do that again. So arc secant for minus 2, we're going to define that to be 2 pi over 3. And for arc secant at minus infinity, we'll say that's going to be pi over 2. And then we'll go ahead with all this substitution that we just did. So I'll do it really quick because we already know how to do all this stuff. So our x value is going to be secant t. I can just cancel that out right now. And for this square root of x squared minus 1, we can go right to, we know this is going to be secant squared minus 1, but then it's going to become tan squared of t. Sorry, I'm mixing variables here. But now I'll just go ahead and we'll rewrite this. So again, going from pi over 2 to pi over 3, we'll have tan t dt. Now here, this square root this time, I'm going to keep the absolute value here. This is just going to be absolute value tan of t. But now I will drop the absolute value right away, but because we're in the second quadrant, tangent is always negative in the second quadrant, so I need to bring a minus sign out front. But then I can cancel tangent with tangent. I'll bring the minus sign. Let's put that out front of the integral. And now we're just integrating 1. Then we'll go ahead and integrate this. So integrating it, we're just going to get minus t evaluated from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. Plugging in now, we're going to have minus 2 pi over 3. For the second term, we're going to have minus times minus plus pi over 2. Get a common denominator. This is going to be minus 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6. Putting it all together, we get our final solution again, minus pi over 6. So the thing to notice on this last method is, yes, we can define this in the second quadrant. We just need to remember the absolute value this time. We have to remember this minus sign, and then we still end up with the same solution. Okay, so there you have it. Interesting definite integral by three different methods. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.